Kevin Davis from Kevin'sTrek.com. Uh, coming to you with another great interview with Chris Barnard. And Chris is the head strength and conditioning coach over at Strength Camp, which is a hardcore strength training facility down in St. Petersburg, Florida. He's also the owner of Total Explosive Training, which is a digital training program uh, to maximize overall athleticism. And, uh, you know, he's got a ma he's working on his master's in exercise physiology and kinesiology down at the University of Miami. Uh, he's worked with everything from high school, college, pro athletes. Guy is a killer strength coach, and I'm pretty excited to have him on here. So why don't we say hi to Chris? To you, buddy. Kevin, how you doing? Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. I'm glad to help you guys out here. Glad to provide some information on strength and conditioning and anything speed and power related. Thanks, Chris. Excited to have you on here. Just, uh, you know, I guess let's start out with, uh, did I miss anything from your background or anything that people probably need to know about you uh, or maybe just like one quick uh, response? What's your um, I, I, I think you, I think you, uh, you, you covered it very well. I think that um, the one thing that I will say I relate to people is uh, I've been on the journey. Um, you know, I, I, I was the slow um, white kid that couldn't jump, but you know, I mean, I was able to be able to use training and our training methods here at Strength Camp to obtain um, to obtain speed and power to explain, to to be able to jump to be able to uh, bridge the gap and use it on the field, um, and that's basically you know, I mean, I'm able to get to the kids and the different athletes, and, and I actually do it. I walk the walk. That's great. That's the best uh, best kind of person to learn from is somebody that's been there and done it. Uh, so, what you know? Why is it important for somebody to use a training program that is specifically focused on uh, speed and power when they want to when they want to improve their game or their athleticism? Um, to me, you see a lot of people talking about a lot of different things. Well, first of all, I got to start off and tell you that depending on where the athlete's at. Is depending on where you want to work with them or what you want to, um, you know what I mean? And I'm not just talking about degree of athlete. I'm talking about, um, you, you know, where they're at in their season, off season. Depending on where that is is when we'll provide that infrastructure. Um, but a lot of times, to be honest with you, when we get the kids in here, um, it's not like we just come out and teach them speed. Um, the biggest thing... We, you know, we get a lot of parents that come in, and they'll want their, you know, young Johnny to learn how to run a faster to first base or something like that, or run faster on the football field. But the biggest thing that we need them to realize is they don't have a foundation of strength. So, uh, just depending on where they're at, you know. But if you have a college kid who can squat 500 pounds, and you, the strength is already there then that's when we can start implying some speed, some power, and some different techniques. Um, on that note, a lot of coaches, you know, I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but a lot of coaches will will tell you, oh, we need to, uh, you know, you need to be this percentage, you need to be able to squat this percentage of your body weight, um, and, or you can start plyometrics. But the thing about the plyometrics is, is, um, they're already doing it on the field. They're already running and jumping on the field. So it's like, how how do you determine when somebody can run or jump in training when they're already doing that on the field? So it's kind of like you want that good uh, balance depending on where the athlete is at. Yeah, that's kind of a funny point that you made about the plyometrics and kind of holding off on those. I mean, the I'm kind of I've always kind of been with you. Like the plyometrics to me are, you know, if when I'm just, I, well, I mean, honestly, I use those if I've got somebody that comes in and wants a bodybuilding program. But, I mean, I, you know, I use plyometrics with everything. I mean, that's, uh, you know, really using the muscle actively. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. you know, when you talk about being strong in one specific range of motion or being strong the whole way throughout, like a depth jump or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why you would want to skip those. So, right. <laughs> plus, those are yeah. great for injury prevention, if you know, as well. Right, absolutely. And like I said, you you know, a lot of them are like, oh, you know, this guy needs to be, you know, before we even have you touching death jumps, you should be squatting half your body weight. But if you really look at athletics, if, if the kid's playing basketball or if he's playing football or baseball, he's already doing that in competition. So it's like you're telling him, wait, 
don't compete until you can squat this much. Like, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? That's not what they want to hear. Uh, you know, there's ways to basically, obviously, I'm not going to have a, a kid that for the first time come in and jump off a 42-inch box and try to <laughs> land it, stick the landing. But there's definitely ways in your training to, to progress them, you know what I mean, within a couple with a couple a uh, couple weeks, you know, so there's definitely a, a a certain way that you need to go about it, depending on where the athlete is at. Yeah, right on. I, I mean, shoot, I got six inch riser boxes that I use to make it higher. Why not start them out on one of those if they're really weak or whatever? Right, right, right. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of guys uh, obviously use bodybuilding type programs, especially when they're starting out or if they haven't worked with a strength coach before. I mean, you know, the muscle and fitness or, or men's health or all these mm -hmm. magazines are out there and there's 10,000 different bodybuilding programs right. that you can do. They're just kind of regurgitated things anyway. But what, so, you know, I mean, is that kind of a good way to start or what should we be doing instead if not uh, following one of these type of programs? Well, I'll, I'll go off by saying that I was one of those guys. I um I remember when I was probably like 14 I had the muscle muscle infection subscription yeah and uh, I followed all the uh, all the everything in there you know I remember seeing the I don't remember what the guys names were but I remember seeing their you know they provide them with their workout and that day as soon as I got that flip to the pant you know they give you their little tricep and bicep workout and I'm yeah. doing this the next day in the gym but uh. You know, the biggest thing that I think that athletes need to realize is because a lot of kids growing up that are athletes, you know, that want to be athletes, they look at these guys and they admire them. And that's yeah. true, just like other athletes, but, you know, obviously bodybuilding is the pure aesthetic point of it is the visual aspect is like, wow, I want to be that person. And if I am that person, then I'll be athletic. But the biggest disconnect that athletes don't realize until they hit about college, and even in high school it's the same way, is athletes train movements they don't train muscles so it's not what your muscle can you know, what it looks like it's what it can do for you on the field of play so I think that's the biggest um, thing that I try to get across to a lot of my guys you know a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of the guys that come in here new you know they'll talk about CrossFit and being ripped and then they'll talk about bodybuilding and, <laughs> and they want to gain size and I try to tell them like all right I can train you like that, but what do you really want? Do you want to become a better football player, or do you want to be a ripped kid, you know, walking around at 170 pounds, or you want to be, uh, you want to do a bulking? Th you know, what I mean, they have so many different things that they come at me with. But I try to tell them, the more you become an athlete, the, the looks will come. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. it's just just it. Go look at any linebacker in the National Football League right now, or any defensive back, and the guys, I mean for what I think are, are, are still aesthetic looking. But yeah. um, the main point that I can say, I guess, is, you know, growing growing up through bodybuilding and using bodybuilding parameters, um, it is it is important as far as certain sports. Um, if you play football, we like to call it, you know, I think Dan John calls it armor building. Um, yeah. For durability, for taking hits, you do need to have size. That's it. I, I still train for football to this day, and I still do a lot of hypertrophy work. I still stimulate my, my muscles in that direction, but I don't spend 40, 50 sets, and I don't do back and biceps on one day. You know what I mean? I do a total body kind of like, you know, I just use the parameters of 8 to 12 um, reps per set, and you know what I mean? I, I probably touch them. I probably touch arms maybe once a week or something like that. So it's not a big um, thing on my list of to do, but I definitely try to stimulate it with some of my football players. Now, if I have a basketball player and I need him to gain size, if I have him, you know, I took this kid uh, right now that I'm working with. He was probably 106 to 150 pounds, really skinny guy. Yeah. But, uh, but it's funny, you know, I have him I have him back squatting, you know, I have him benching and he puts on the weight automatically. So it's just like, you know, if you do certain things, they're gonna gain the weight. They don't need to do bicep curls for, you know, twice a week. Yeah. And, you know, so so to me, they're gonna gain the size if they actually follow a complex movement type of regimen. Well, and again, I mean, the time of year as well, I know you mentioned that about how you train people with time of year. I mean if you're you know, immediately after the season ends, you know, you kind of take a little rest period or whatever. That's that's really kind of when you're going to probably do most of the hypertrophy stuff right. anyway. 
Right. So. Right. Absolutely. We take them through a phase. You know, we we you know say we have our football players who worked with us throughout the years. So, I mean, they're obviously getting off of in season. They're getting done with the in season, which we call maintenance. But at the same time, we have a lot of guys that hit PRs in season with us so they'll hit their best bench or they'll hit their best squat and stuff like that and it has happened it doesn't happen with everybody but it depends on how dedicated they are and how hard they want to work through the season um soon as we get them off of that we're going to take them through basically the first phase the first phase is just building that foundation and completely um you know we're taxing the nervous system with heavy strength complex lifts, making sure they're building that foundation. And then we, we obviously use auxiliary lifts for, for muscle building. For you know, I mean we use bodybuilding parameters to grow that size on them and then take them into the other phases where we're okay, we have this body now, we have this infrastructure, now let's move it into this. But not to forget that we are still making them run and jump. You can't just gain the size and expect you to be able to, you know, switch it on all of a sudden. We still have them jumping. We still have them moving in their own body. So it's kind of just a, a very undulated um, block of just, you know, we throw everything at them. Uh, so, you know, so with some of the things we talked about in mind here, I mean, is there a, a good place people can start or a program maybe for these guys to check out uh, if they want to get started with some of the, the techniques that we've talked about and get their, get a little more speed and power and, and crank up the athleticism? Yeah, well, um, I actually have have three resources that we've created. Um, I have a total explosive training, which is basically the um, uh, it's basically power training. It has, a, it has all the auxiliaries. It's just a three-month workout that I used in college that I put together and I really kind of, you know, honed in and designed. And that was the actual training that I did um, for football to go play at the University of Miami. Um, I'm actually redoing that now. It's going to be a complete power um, training DVD series, you know, showing you how to train power, how to put it speed in, how to, you know, it's basically going to be a template for exactly what you need to do to, to train as an athlete. Um, we also have a linear speed program. It's kind of more tackling on a, uh, you know, we start off by, by tackling speed, what we call speed traps, basically muscle viruses, muscle imbalances in your body that are holding you back from being faster. There's a lot of different things going on in the hips in our society with the uh, typical inhibition with, uh, with the, you know, the hip flexors being too tight and the glutes inhibited, not turning on. Um, so we tackle a lot of that in that program. And then we also have a football strength program, which is gridiron domination, where we take every, every guy through, I think it's like a 28-week 28 28 workout, and it's basically taking them through the entire offseason as a football player, um, like we were talking about from a base phase to a, a development phase where they're doing more speed and power, and then a peak phase where we're basically peaking them for the season. So all three of those right there, we definitely, you know, Depending on where you want and what you need, um, I definitely think that um, if those are, I mean, those are available. But if they aren't, I, I definitely feel like as far as what kids need to realize is get with somebody that knows a great balance of what that person needs. Each person has their own individualized um, uh, regimen that they need to follow, depending on where they're at. Some, you know, I mean. But like I said, usually, typically, what we see is we need a a strong foundation of strength, very strong foundation of strength, and then from there, it's like you can you can add all the pieces together and you could build out. But the roots, the roots of the tree, are definitely the are definitely the foundation of strength. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you guys. I mean, I've checked out the programs that Chris is talking about here. Uh, I, you mentioned we, you know, you're kind of working with these things. And this is uh, Chris is also working with an, uh, another strength coach, Elliot Hulse, who uh, is a fantastic uh, strength coach and pro strongman. Uh, pretty killer dude. Uh, the programs that they've put together, the gridiron domination, that's the one you're talking about, that was the 28 week program. A fan fantastic, uh, like you mentioned, you know, setting that foundation of, of strength. Uh, I definitely think that goes through kind of all the way through from start to finish. I mean, the, you know, there's videos in there 
uh, along with just the text and the and the template. There's videos in there of like like some of the videos of Chris jumping, you know, what three miles in the air or something like that, and you know what I mean. Uh, some great explosive training and showing you how actually with some video how to do the necessary exercises. So I mean, I would definitely recommend checking that one out. Um, as well as the muscle imbalances, I mean, that's that's something that I see all the time with clients of mine, uh, and, and utilize definitely some of the information that is in that program as well. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely a good place to start. Uh, you know, what, one other question, I mean, you talked about when people should start. I mean, is there, you know, do you see, like, young athletes coming in? I know you guys train a lot of high school, college, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the way up through pro athletes. What about uh, you know if we've got some some younger teenagers? I mean, is there what would you say about the safety point of starting this type of training specifically? Um, I get a lot of questions about that. Um, how, I'll first start off by saying uh, research. I think I think it's my uh, my professor Biagioli from the University of Miami. He had he did, he did some. Kind of, he was involved in some kind of research that shows that, you know, Olympic lifts do not show any stress on the epiphyseal plates. So all the parents that are out there that are scared about their child uh, stunting their growth and certain movements, there is none, especially playground movements. I think for years people have been doing different stuff on the playground and yeah. with their body weight, and they don't need to fear anything. But uh, it's not like I take a 12-year-old and put a bar on his back. No. But I don't do, you know what I mean, as far as weight-bearing exercises like that. Um, but what I do do when I get, say, when I have worked with um, younger athletes, uh, and I actually learned this from Ellie. I don't know why I'm not shouting him out. That guy's he's taught me everything <laughs> yeah. I basically know. So shout-out to Ellie. Elliot, shout-out. But, um, but uh, he's in the next room. But, um, but to be honest with you, the way I, I learn um, is, is definitely taking them and looking from a standpoint of, like we said, muscle imbalances, when they're a kid, you're not going to see, I mean, you start to see certain things with uh, PlayStation and Xbox so prevalent these days. It's like, okay, now you start to see, a, you know what I mean, start to see the patterns. Um, but they're all pretty typical. Uh, when, when I do work with them, a lot of things that I have them doing is just moving in their own body. You know, uh, the, the number – one thing that I could say with the kids is, is have them, you know, I'll take a group of kids over at the park. I used to train. I think they were anywhere from uh, from eight years old to about 15, and it was maybe 30, 40 kids at the time, and it was just, you know, they wanted to, you know, basically all I did was I would go through a series of speed movements, series our movements where I get them jumping in their own body. I'd finish off with body weight strength, just teaching them how to how to ingrain those motor patterns. Um, I think that the biggest lack is is you, you know you get a kid in high school and you 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 tell them to squat and they don't even really know how to recruit that kind of yeah. motor. So um, like I said, a lot or of college. Right, right, <laughs> right. There's guys in pros. I worked with um, a defensive back from St. Louis Rams this past offseason, and it was funny to me how, you know what I mean, when I had them squat and do different things, you're still seeing the knee cave in. It's just like, how are you, yeah. how'd you make it that far? You're so injury prone. But then you say, yeah. So it's like, that's the biggest thing is you, it's, and people, you know, not a lot of people like to get, oh, I don't care about injury prevention, I'm young type of deal. But you definitely set the, set the tone early to later years they don't have to, you know what I mean? If they're using their glutes to start, stop, and, and they're, you know, in, on the play, on the field of play, they're definitely going to uh, be a lot success, more successful athlete, and I believe that they will reduce the risk of injuries. Um, like I said, doing certain things in their body weight. You know, a lot of kids think their core is strong, and they do a hundred crunches a night, <laughs> sit ups. That's but, endurance, not strong. <laughs> right. There's no stability. There's no there's no energy transference. So it's 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 a big thing that I do with them as far as. Uh, you know, I might get the medicine balls out there, and I might have them tossing it around. Have them do a lot of durability in their core, a lot of strength, uh, static strength. Um, I have them, uh, I have them do a lot. Like I said, a lot of body weight exercise, basic primal patterns, basic primal patterns. I have them do that all day long, and then just vary it. 
you know, like I said in the beginning, I'll have them uh, do different things. Elliot showed me with one of them, you know, it, just 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 play playground with them, like he always mentioned. Yeah. Like, have them, you know, set them up in some cones and have them playing tag, and they're learning how to juke and run, and and you know what I mean. You just have them moving in their own body. A lot of times, a lot of these kids don't get that. Um, so I think that parents think that there's some huge overwhelming success that you could do with them. You can, uh, you have the magic potion, but they don't realize it's just, you know, and it really is teaching teaching a motor pattern to them, teaching them how to squat, and then seeing them run faster, basically down the road. It's like they think it's magic potion, but really you're just, you know, what I mean, showing them back to the basics. So that's kind of how we we tailor it to the younger athletes. Right, I like that. You kind of, I mean. You, you you touched on the squats there. That's something that I've talked about. I don't know how many different times. Uh, I mean, if you watch a toddler or, or a small child squat, they already know how to do it right. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to just take a video of like a little kid squatting and show that to athletes when they come in right. and start working with me. Like, look, just do this. Right. You know, I mean, we're really reteaching motor patterns here. Uh, but I mean, I, yeah, I, I really agree with you on that. I mean, if you just you know use instead of you know giant weights and everything on the younger guys, uh, get the get the motor recruitment uh, patterns set, mm -hmm. teach them the appropriate reception that they're going to need later on. Um, I mean, I know you know this, but just in case the viewers don't know this, I mean, the, when you first start out a training program, uh, the, you know, the main, even, even strength increases that you're going to get are because of the neuromuscular connection getting stronger. Your body's learning how to tell the muscle what to do. <laughs> And so if you can do that, whoa, <laughs> if you can do that uh, at a young age, then like you said, when you get them in high school or college, they'll just be ready to go. And, uh, and then you can throw on some massive weights, and that's when you get some, some big dudes. So, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, you know, one more thing I was, I was wondering about too is what about, uh, you know, some of these guys might be, because of course we're talking about some programming uh, and some resources that they can use uh, from us here online. Uh, they're watching this video maybe at home. What if they don't have, uh, especially in the off season, a training facility to work in or a gym that they go to? Maybe they're working out at home using sandbags or things like that. I mean, what would you recommend for that? Is there any specific equipment that they can maybe get easily or body weight stuff that you would recommend? Um, are you referring to the younger population or are you referring to kids who are actually like in high school and college and playing? Yeah, no, in general, like the, the high school and college that are playing already. Um, we, we, we do get a lot of questions about that. And the, and the thing that I always tell them is, you know, I mean, if you can't find this stuff, then you're just being lazy. <laughs> That's just generally what we, what we tell them. I mean, um, even when I lived in Miami... I rented a house from an old Cuban lady, and I knew that <laughs> I knew that tire yards they have to pay to dispose of those huge tractor tires. They have to pay. So when you have a, a, a guy coming along and he wants this, the biggest tire they have in the lot, and he knows that he's got to pay, you know, whatever it is, fifty bucks to get rid of it, and you're here like, hey, please let me take this off your hands, he'll be more than glad to give it to you. You know, I mean, that's a, a, you know, sandbags. They're easy to make. You know what I mean? Um, I think we, we just held a seminar this past weekend, and uh, one of the kid had an awesome story. He was talking about how he used to be in prison, and he was telling us how he did like floor presses underneath beds, and and they used to fill up oh, bags nice. with water and do curls with broomsticks. And I'm just like, you know, people people can make all kind of excuses they want, but really. Um, but just to go on that, I guess if, if, if they don't have anything, um, uh, they can get with a partner. And I think Elliot was answering a question about this the other day. Depending on what they want, um, if they could just get with somebody, you know, you can apply manual resistance, whether it be push-ups or squats or have a guy get on your back and, and, and you know, walk down the field. Um, you can do bear crawls with a guy on your back. You can have them. You can do bodybuilding type stuff You can with a simple rope. You know, what I mean, you guys can pull each other back and forth, do rows, do tricep extensions, um, shoulder raises, anything that you guys can think of. You just got to get creative with it. If it comes to an athlete's perspective, obviously, when the speed and power, we don't. I mean, I have guys jumping. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I'll tell them go to the playground, jump over different things. I remember we didn't have a box in Miami, and I, I worked out at a real bodybuilding type gym for a little while, and um, you know. The one thing we used to go to a park and 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 jump on uh, picnic benches, 
So there's a lot of different ways that they can do it. You know, find a hill, run uphill, downhill, you know. So j just being – now to actually tailor in their regimen, that's a different story. But there shouldn't be any excuse why they can't get faster and stronger if they don't have a prototypical gym, um, per se, within reach of them. But uh, like I said, I think that I think that um, I think that if you can't get a hold of a lot of these things, you're just being lazy. So yeah, no, I'm with you. I mean, there's a ton of resources out there. I mean, I've got some stuff on KevinsTrek.com talking about like making the sandbags and things like that. Uh, right. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna do down below here. I'm gonna have some links. It's gonna uh, link over to Chris's website. We'll link. Uh, you know some of that stuff up maybe this the strength camp website and I'll see if I can find the link for that video you were talking about where Elliot mentioned the the body weight um, right uh, partner body weight resistance yeah. and we'll yep. put that on there uh, the other thing too with the tires a uh, good one that I do is I just get the regular <clears throat> passenger vehicle tires and put an eye bolt through through the sidewall and yank that with a with a rope and you've got a sled Absolutely. I mean it saves you a couple Absolutely. hundred bucks. Absolutely, so. take those and throw them. Use it yeah. as a medicine ball. You know, we do, we do back tosses with the with the tire, or you know, what I mean, we you have to get creative with. It. We'll do side throws. You know, what I mean, working basically the, resembling a wood chop, um, but it's ballistic because they're letting it go. So it's actually I like those a lot better. You know what I mean? So I, I think they just got to get a little creative with it. Learn a couple different exercises. I mean, we can go all day talking about different movements that we can do with these objects. But uh, as you know, Strength Camp, the gym that we're at now, it's a little bit fancier now, but uh, Elliot started it with nothing. I mean, he had guys, he basically had a little bit of equipment in a park, and he had guys doing different things. I remember him training us, and they chopped the tree down uh, in, in front of the gym, and he had us, I, I, at the time I thought he was, it was hardly, <laughs> but... He had us lifting the log and, and putting it over our shoulder, like doing some Navy SEAL type stuff, you know what I mean, running with it. But you just have to get creative with it, and you can't come from a sense of laziness. That's that's bottom line. That's what it melts down to. I would love to give the explanation of why guys don't do it, but I really think that it's just they're lazy, and they think it's, I mean, they don't want to put in the work. So to me, you, it's available. Just go get it. Well, I think you hit on it with being creative, too. I mean, <clears throat> You know, I'm in I'm in Chicago, and right I'm in the big city here. It's like you were talking about going to a tire yard and finding the big tires, and I've had a hell of a time trying to find like anything, you know, bigger and heavy. Mm -hmm. I caught up. I one day I caught up. I don't know ten different places, and most of them didn't know what the hell I was talking about when I asked <laughs> about a tractor tire. It's like they've never heard of a tractor or something. I don't know, but <laughs> at the tire places. But uh, so you know, I'll go out. I mean, I went and found a park where there was like some busted up concrete, and we were just right. flipping chunks of concrete. I mean. You know, these pieces, you know, whatever, you can't even see me in the video here. These pieces right, right, like this right. size of like cement, you know, massive right. stone. And just using those like a tire flip. I mean, you can right. do some incredible stuff with it. Yeah, so, if, you mimic, if you mimic the, if you mimic, if you know the primal patterns, and if you, depending on what sport you play here for us with power, it's, it's a lot of hip extension, hip flexion. Mm -hmm. But if you know these movements, you can use anything. You can, you can design a program out of anything. So I, I feel like... Uh, you know, I guess the answer to that question is if, if the, you want to learn, learn the primal movement patterns, uh, learn what you're using when you're in the game, um, and then mimic those. You know, I mean, get creative and mimic those, like you said. And those, you know, those resources that we talked about are going to be a great place to learn those primal movement patterns. I mean, you're, you're going through all of those, especially in the gridiron, you know, the football strength program. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the imbalance program again is going to help you to make sure that you're activating the muscles that we're talking about in those. So I uh, just want to wrap this up here with a uh, quick little, you know, kind of recap of Chris here that we're talking about. This is for you guys that aren't familiar with it. This is the website for Strength Camp at strengthcamp.com. Um, this is the training facility that Chris coaches out of. You can see a picture of Chris in case you missed the video. <laughs> uh, talks a little bit more about Chris and this is Elliot. We gave a shout out, you know, Chris gave a shout out to him there. Um, if you are in or around St. Petersburg or plan on making a trip down there sometime, I would definitely recommend checking, checking this out and see about doing a little bit of training with Chris. Otherwise, you can also check out the, so one of the resources we talked about, the footballstrengthprogram.com. 
And just a quick shot here to show you guys what we're talking about. And there's some video on here and, you know, we'll go into, you know, you can go into some more detail about it afterwards. But this is a great resource. 24 weeks of strength, power, and speed workouts for football domination, 12 mass gaining meal plans, meal plans, not even just training alone, uh, DVD video series, and just kind of showing here a little bit of some of the guys that uh, are talking about and have worked with this program, uh, you know, and we're talking, I mean, look at this, man. We're talking about guys from the Giants, the Rams, you know, professional type players here, and just a couple of the results. So just give you guys an idea of what we're talking about there. And other than that, thanks for watching. Chris, thanks for talking and hanging out with us. Uh, it's awesome Thank to you. have you. Uh, any last comments before we go? Um, I'd just like to thank you. I appreciate you. You know what I mean? Um, it, obviously, you, you've said more than enough. If you guys need any information, it's 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 all right there. And um, I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, down below, we're going to have links to access some of the resources that we talked about in this video. And make sure and come back and watch us again. Thanks.